Welcome to the Peacocks podcast episode 6. At this time I'm joined by English commentator for J Sports and DAZN Japan and Taunton Town loyalist Ben Mabley. Ben, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank Did you like the great. introduction? I did, loved it. Yeah, very smooth, all in one take. Exactly. It's all, all very good, all very good. It's an absolute honour to be here. No, thanks for, thank you for coming on the show. Um, so you're, you're here from Japan for yeah. a, number of, a number of weeks, obviously, just after Christmas. Are you, are you enjoying your time back in England? Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, it's, it's, it's busy with family stuff at this time of year. There's lots of football going on, so you, it's a bit like a busman's holiday sometimes mm. because I've still got to keep keep abreast yeah. of what's going on in the Premier League and stuff um, but yeah come to Talking Town for a couple of games exactly. catch up with friends it's and it, it's funny we were so we, obviously we had Western which unfortunately we lost Tiverton which we lost but then you came to the game uh, uh, you know against Gosport and we won so well yeah I was also here though on uh, Boxing Day ah um, okay so so that wasn't quite so good and then of course we lost the Tiverton game and I've got uh, I got told maybe it's because I'm here that we were losing. So I was very relieved with the second half yeah. comeback uh, against Gosport. Thinking, ah, oh, the curse is broken. Yeah, I mean, usually I'm back here for Christmas. We, we've we had derbies mm. on Boxing Day, which we've typically won in the past. So it's, a, it's typically a good time to come back for that mm. reason as well. I was a bit worried that I was going to be back and just see defeat. So yeah, yeah, yeah the, the Gosport win was good. The way we came back in the second half definitely, was excellent to definitely. see. Yeah. Uh, which goal was your favourite? Well, yeah, the winner. Course. Yeah, Ollie, Ollie Chamberlain's Ollie Chamberlain. outside the yeah. Yeah, I mean, just because everything everything seemed to go so much better from the from midway through the second half. You know, they had the two penalties right at the beginning of the match. You think the referee's going to give everything, then suddenly the referee's giving nothing. <laughs> it makes the players on edge. I think mm. it makes the supporters on edge. I think with the with the run of defeats that we'd had, the supporters were maybe feeling a little bit negative mm. anyway. So it, lo- it was looking a bit like a damp squib at the start of the second half. Then. Dan Sully had a header yeah. the, straight at the goalkeeper. It wasn't a, a great chance, but suddenly it was like we had a bit of momentum. Yeah, there's, there's something there. And there was momentum behind the goal. There was momentum on the drums. Exactly. There was mem- momentum in the songs, and then there was momentum in the players. We got back to 2-2, suddenly it's 3-2, and then, yeah, mm. onslaught. It's, 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 it's the real commentator in you that's coming out as a, I can feel, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you, you have to sell the story exactly. of the match, don't yeah. you? You have to find where the story is. I mean, the story is, I was telling my friends um, behind the goal, mm. uh, like, it's got to be an onslaught the second half. Mm. It's going to happen, and you know the first ten minutes it didn't. You've got to believe in these yeah, things exactly. you? from your supporters' perspective. And so then, it, then when it did happen, it's like see, I'm you know, telling the right story mm. in the first place. Uh, you know, when your predictions come off, then then that's when you yeah. tell people afterwards <laughs> that you made them. You know, when, Get, yeah. Then, guess what? I got the score right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Okay, so we're recording this on Monday, the sixth of January. Uh, what have you? What else have you got going on this week? You say you're you're going back on Wednesday, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, tomorrow I'm packing my suitcase, okay, yeah. and Wednesday morning I'm I'm flying away again. Uh, I can imagine the suitcase is, is fairly big if it's three weeks of yeah, of staying here. Three, well, I stay with my mum when I'm I'm here. She's she's very good doing my laundry oh, and everything. That's good. Uh, it's I'm, like a uni I'm, student coming yeah, home. It is, it is exactly like that. So for you know. 49 weeks of a year I'm an adult living in my own place in Japan for three weeks a year I'm, I'm, I'm a kid yeah. living with my, with my mum again so that's so that was a great yeah big suitcase because you come back with Christmas presents for everybody then uh, yeah. you receive Christmas presents as, as, mm-hmm. as well and you've got also like, stuff that you can get here but you, you can't get know, can't get there yeah. and things like that so oh, well, yeah so did you have a good Christmas and New Year? feels yeah. weird asking that on the 6th of January but yeah I mean it's been it's been quite a nice long break this time the way that my schedule worked out it was either fly back on Christmas mm. Eve or take a longer break so I took ah, a longer break I've been, I've been here for almost three weeks mm. yeah yeah it's, it's been good been to you know a couple of matches yeah. here seen, seen family seen friends um, good stuff. Yeah, it's been good. Brilliant. Uh, so I'm going to start just with a couple of questions. We'll, sure. we'll see how long this. We'll see how long this goes. Uh, and it's. I always say this to some of the players when they do this podcast. Um, it's a bit of a pretentious question. What is the story of Ben Mabley? I.e., where did you grow up? You know, what did you study at school and all this sort of okay. stuff. Uh, it's not a pretentious question. Uh, it may feel a bit pretentious to, to answer <laughs> it. So this is my story. Okay. But, but uh, sure. well, I'm. You know, I'm born and raised in in Taunton. When I was a kid, I was born in Musgrove Hospital. Mm. I grew up in in Blackbrook, so literally, oh, literally, literally yeah, the other minutes. side of, of Hamilton Park. Mm-hmm. I played in Hamilton Park as, right. as a kid. Uh, there wasn't a primary school in Blackbrook when I was born, so I went to primary school at Rushton, went to secondary school at Heathfield, mm-hmm. went to college at Richard Hewish. Um, and so, yeah, I was, I was in Taunton all the way through till, uh, till 17. Um, went to university, studied Japanese. Yeah. What, what university? Oxford. Oh, it was Oxford, yeah. yeah. I, I, had someone say that before, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah fortunate enough to get in in there. Yeah. Uh, and until that point, I mean, I was good at maths as a kid mm. and, and did like maths and further maths at, at Hewish and English language and physics. So you know, I was more on the on the sciences side mm. than the arts side. But my dad used to work for Japanese companies, right. 
and would travel to Japan two or three times a year, uh, bring back Japanese toys yeah. to me as, as a kid, and it, that kind of that sparked a bit of an interest. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's something here. There's something here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I had this interest in Japan. I came to go and looking through university. Mm -hmm. Brochures, uh, prospectuses, and uh, so what am I going to study? I don't really want to do maths anymore. And oh, you can study Japanese, <laughs> and it was it was literally that. I didn't yeah. even realise you could study Japanese until I was looking through university prospectuses. So actually, yeah, I've always been interested. Is it? I mean, obviously, you you know a bit now, obviously. But um, is it, is it an easy language to learn? Do you, did you find was it struggling at some parts or? Um, naively, in my first year, I thought, I'm picking this up pretty okay. quickly. Because, I mean, I, I'd studied French and German at Heathfields and never took that any further. But you do that, obviously, as part of 10 different subjects yeah. or whatever that you studied. When I was, I was just studying Japanese, with Japanese history and mm -hmm. culture and other lectures as, as well. But it was just purely focused on Japan. Right. So you, you cover a lot more in a, in, a, in a week, in a month, in a term than you would do, obviously, at school. And so I thought, yeah, I'm picking this up quite quickly. After four months, uh, went to Japan for four months. This was you know, part of the course. Yeah. Went to a university there, lived with a host family who didn't speak English. Okay. So you're thrown in at the deep end. Wow. But when you are, you do then. The I suppose that was a bit challenging. Yeah, but then you do then learn to swim and you come back and think, well, I've only been learning Japanese mm -hmm. for nine months and I'm this is going well. Going all right. Yeah. Then you get your textbook for the second year. You open the first page, so there's still this much I have to learn. And the third <laughs> oh, year no. Comes, yeah. And the fourth year textbook is like, oh. You know, you, the, the the more you the more you know, the more you realise there is that you still don't know. I think this applies to lots of things in, yeah, in exactly. life. And yes, yeah, so now so what? I started university in two thousand, so it'll be twenty years this October that I first started learning Japanese, and I can't claim it to be perfect. It's good enough to do the job that I do, yeah. so so it's not bad. But um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's different. And speaking of the the job that you, how did how did you get into commentating and football media in general? All right, so I'm now I'm a, a commentator on Japanese uh, TV. As as you as you said, I work on the Premier League mm. and on the Champions League and on occasion on the Belgian League. Okay, funnily enough, in, on so this is commentating in Japanese on on European football uh, from studios in in, in Tokyo. And I also co-host uh, some review shows right. and shows looking at the wider culture. I've seen a couple of things on Twitter about that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, for example, there's a, a pre-recorded show that went out today where looking ahead to 2020 and so with the result of the election, mm -hmm. uh, now Brexit is happening this month, so what's the effect on Brexit? Yeah. of Brexit going to be on the Premier League? So we have, we have segments on that sort Got of thing as well, sort yeah, of wider yeah. issues. Um, so, so yeah, this is the job that I do. How I got into it was, well... I had a year in Japan as part of my university course. So I went, went back for a second time as a student and by chance ended up in a city called Osaka, which is like yeah. the second city. It's kind of like the Manchester, mm -hmm. I suppose, of Japan. Loved it there. Thought, right, when I graduate, don't care what I do. I just want to go back and live in Osaka for mm -hmm. a bit. It doesn't matter what I do. I um, got a job as a translator and thought I'd be doing that for a couple of years and then come back here and start a real career. Yeah. Then I liked it too much. <laughs> stayed for a bit longer and thought right if I'm going to stay in Japan longer I need to start my actual yeah. career um, yeah now I've been there for 14 years how I got into the job that I do well I, I was fortunate in that I always wanted to be a football commentator okay yeah like I think my, I'm 37 now a lot of people my age still aren't really sure what they want to right, do okay, I yeah. mean even my mum was saying the other the day some of the people her age this, <laughs> they've, got, they've got to, to that point of life I'm still not really sure yeah. what they wanted to do I was quite lucky because I played as a goalkeeper for Rooston Primary School mm. my hero was Peter Schmeichel okay I wasn't as good as Peter Schmeichel oh, unfortunately no. but I used to get told off in class for talking about football quite a bit yeah and I thought oh yeah it happens you know if I could get a job talking about football, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, the BBC motor racing commentator, Murray Walker, used to say about himself, uh, those who can do, those who can't talk about it. And it was with that in mind that he became a commentator yeah. rather than a racing driver. And I was inspired by that and had in the back of my mind, from about the age of 10, I'd like to be a football commentator. Mm -hmm. So I got to this point in my life where I'm staying in Japan as opposed to coming back here and then looking for that kind of job here. Uh, I, I managed to become acquainted with uh, quite a well-known football journalist in, in Japan, so I did a bit of work sort of as his assistant. Okay. Then was able to write a blog and start a podcast on his website, which uh, was not seen or heard by that many people. No, I think that I think the, even the idea of starting a podcast and even doing it yeah. is is. It's a good sort of kickstart almost. Yeah, I'm sure, sure you love doing it. Sure. I mean, I was given the freedom to do what I want. It yeah. wasn't seen by all that many people, but it, it gave me the freedom to yeah. express myself as, as, I, 
as uh, as I liked. Uh, the podcast eventually got a few more listeners. Uh, it led to some other freelance work or often unpaid mm-hmm. uh, writing for people who for websites that might get a few more view, yeah. uh, readers basically that then led to getting press passes and once you get press passes then you get your foot literally in the door yeah. to start meeting other people who that's, might, that's when it gets real yeah yeah I mean so then I got an unpaid job working for gold.com mm-hmm. uh, on their Japanese language version I was writing tactical uh, analysis analysis is what, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> For, on, on J League matches, um, the producer at J Sports read this column, liked it, nice. said, Oh, there's an English guy working in Japanese yeah. in Japan on football. We wanted someone like that uh, for our Premier League coverage, okay. and they invited me. To- on basically Brilliant. yeah I, was, I mean my next question was going to be how did how did the opportunity arise to do it in Japan but that was just where you were at yeah the time. it was where, where I was at the time I, my my interests in Japan and in uh, and in football were completely separate yeah I ended up doing my dissertation at university on uh, Gamba Osaka my local right, football team okay. in the J League and the sort of the relationship that they had with their local society um, but that was as far as I thought it would go. The kind of the, the combination of football in Japan. I thought well, I'd, I'd, I'd see out my interest in Japan, come back here, yeah. and try and get a job in the football media here. Um, but you just I, loved it so much. So yeah, yeah. And so, so if I was going to stay any longer, it's like, well, I can't wait until I'm thirty hmm. something, come back here, and then hope to start a career. It might be a bit too late by then. You know, I needed to get something, get the ball rolling. No, I like definitely, I, I, yeah. I totally agree with that. And you've got, you've got to, if you want to do something, you've got to make something of it. Yeah. And you've, got, you've got to start. Whether you know if you, if you were young or if if it's early in your career, then yeah. you've just got to do it because, like you say, if you if you end up thirty and you still don't know what you want to do, but if you go yeah. back to Japan and and things may have not worked out in the way that you want, yeah, you yeah, want them to. Exactly. I mean, I was fortunate enough in that the degree that I had um, in Japanese had given me pretty good skills as a translator. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I got a job at, at a uh, Panasonic in Japan as a translator, yeah. and was able to get through quite a lot of work per day compared to some of the other people that they have, have working there, I guess, which get, put me in a decent negotiating position to say, right, I couldn't afford to give it up. I was like, let me work from home. I started yeah. working from home with the objective of finishing my daily quota as soon as possible early in the afternoon so I could spend the rest of the afternoon, evening, doing initially unpaid work or very low paid mm-hmm. writing about football or talking about on this podcast um, and get into it that way. I mean, I spent four years not really knowing where this was leading, mm-hmm. hoping it would get me somewhere meeting people occasionally trying to get a few more contacts yeah. hoping something would pay off and then when when it did when the tv work came round it, it almost fell into my lap because mm-hmm. i was writing this uh, this this column in, in in japanese getting paid nothing for it but fortunately it was read by the right yeah. person and it um it was very gratifying that a lot of hard work had paid off not necessarily in the way i'd expected or or mm-hmm. i didn't really know where it was leading as i was doing it yeah but if you work hard enough, eventually somebody notices. Yeah, something's going to happen. Is, is what I hoped. And thought I was very lucky that I was in the right place at the right time that a TV producer, who was a bit of a maverick, wanted a, an English guy yeah. to, to, to bring a bit of cultural background to their Premier League coverage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think uh, something that's that's really, st- is especially in like the, our line of work, in, in media in general, it's sometimes not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah. I think that's that's something that can be carried over in, in all aspects of... Yeah, and when, once once you're there, I mean, I, I was very lucky this guy took a chance on, mm. on me. I mean, in at the beginning, I think I was down for 10 shows, and then if I was any good... Uh, then you great. Just and be the not, best you can for those tensions. Yeah, and at first I was rubbish. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'd never done TV work before. I'd always yeah. wanted to do it. I was doing it in my second language. I didn't know where to look. I didn't know should I be looking at the camera. Should I be looking? That's literally yeah. you're chucked right in the defense. Yeah, yeah. That's there was crazy. we did we did one non-broadcast pilot. Yeah, and that was the only uh, training that I had. The rest was kind of on the job training. God. And you know, it's it's it was kind of it was difficult because you had. Two cameras, one for the, well, three cameras, one for, one for the, the other guy on the show, one mm. for me, and then one for, for, the, for us both. You got uh, your, your assistant directors on the, on the floor mm. with, with your board saying how many minutes till the ad books, yeah. that kind of thing. And I've got my notes and we've got our script and stuff. And then the monitor showing what's been on the screen at the moment. Oh, yeah. and, and, you know, I'm used to that now, but at first it's like, when There's can I look where? So many screens. Yeah. And when when do I have time to look at my notes and and not it yeah, not be when, on camera? When is it on me? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I mean, I'm sure the first ten or so that I did, I was rubbish. But fortunately, they you know they they kept me yeah. on until I got until I got used to it. And 
ultimately they let me talk about my hometown and I got away with talking about Talton Town Good. on the show. Good. And yeah, this is this has been a theme of my work. Good since on you, Ben. Then. Well yeah. done. Like, you know, towing the company allowed that. I think we like that here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and I was just I was mentioning this to you off air. Um, I've always really wanted to go to Japan and okay. you've mentioned Osaka yeah. and I've, I'm a, I'm a big fan of professional wrestling. Uh, okay. They do a lot in Japan. They do. In um, Osaka, and yeah, exactly. Osaka is, is considered to be quite a, a quite a lovely place. Yeah. Uh, so where, what is your favorite place? And where would you recommend me to go yeah, to I mean, Japan? I was lucky. Oh, Osaka is brilliant. Okay. Osaka. Why is it brilliant? It's, it's really hard to describe, <laughs> but it's, it's quite different from the rest of Japan in that people are quite outgoing. People are, and people are friendly in Japan in general, oh, yeah. don't get me wrong, but uh, I think on the whole they're quite reserved and, and, and conservative in, in many parts of the, of the country, Tokyo particularly. In Osaka, people are a bit a bit louder. Yeah. And it can come across to, to people who are not familiar with it as a bit more brash, but I think there's a, there's a warmth there. Yeah. There's, there's a, a really strong local identity which came across, which really appealed to me when I was there as a student. Mm-hmm. And I mean, Osaka, yeah, it's got a wrestling culture. The baseball team is is extremely well supported. Right. Hanshin Tigers, um, they're not very good, but they but everyone shows but, up. I mean, the, yeah. just the passionate support that is is just an embodiment of the local pride. I spent uh, the first month I was there in the year that I spent there. I went, I went behind the goal at three local football right. teams: uh, Vissel Kobe, which now is Iniesta playing for them. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, Cerezo Osaka and Gamba Osaka. Gamba Osaka was a, a tiny little stadium. The stand behind the goal was was a grass bank. Mm-hmm. You know, the facilities were, were, were worse than than the, than at Taunton Town yeah. at, at that time. Um, but the small gathering of supporters, they really cared. Oh, for sure, yeah. And because, the, and it's like, oh, why do you care so much? Because this is Osaka. This is what. Yeah. This, you know, this is this is our city. This is our town, and that sort of local identity that really uh, shone it through does was, resonate was, with people. was what appealed to me. The food culture in Osaka is good as as well. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of the foreign students who who who, who lived there like me, had, had just gone to Osaka because that was where the opportunity was. Yeah. I mean, they might have chosen somewhere else if given given that chance, but then found, oh, I'm so, so glad that we're yeah. here. So, yeah, I would recommend that. What I would say in, in general is, if you're going to visit Japan, don't just visit Tokyo. Tokyo is good too, but if you put it the other way around, someone who's come from Japan, if they just visited London, thought, oh, this is what yeah, the UK's like. Yeah, it's not... A- like a proper idea of what sure. Actually. L- L- London's a nice place in itself, but yeah. it's not really representative of the rest of the country. It's a big sort of multicultural yeah. place, uh, a global city, really. Okay. Um, if it's when you go to places like Taunton or even like to, to Manchester, yeah. where you have a bit more of a local or a regional identity, where mm-hmm. the uh, the real kind of I don't know, the spirit comes yeah. through, and I, that's, I guess that's what appealed to me. Okay. Yeah. No, I like that because it because you know it like you say if if you go to London it's not a, obviously it's not a true representation of England but if you say go to Japan I've got to visit more places just to get a proper yeah idea. yeah I'd say that so I tell people in Japan to yeah. come visit Taunton obviously yeah obviously you know but I mean within my job I talk about Taunton Town as often mm-hmm. as I possibly as you can, can. Before not the director goes mm, maybe not yeah but I I get away with it the professional justification for it is that there aren't any Tiverton fans mm. in in Japan so, yeah. so if I was on, if I was on um, on Japanese TV banging on about Manchester United all the yeah. time and, and, and being biased towards them then people would get <laughs> rightly annoyed yeah. but no one's going to get annoyed about Taunton Town because no, there's a link there because people the, cause, because there's a direct link there there's no Japanese fans that are going to be fans of, of rivals but it's, it's it almost serves as a case study like this is how a 7th tier English football team yeah is this is how it matters to its local community this is how hard the people uh like like yourself like like kevin like like rob um all work mm. the, the staff the players the sacrifices that goes in and it, it's there's so many great stories and you know it, had i been from another part of the country it would have been that team that i was yeah, talking about exactly. because, because i'm from here it's like okay we don't need to talk about the other teams at this level because mm. we don't need to give a comprehensive overview of non-league football but just taunton town as a case study of non-league football yeah, of, of semi-professional football in this country this is what's going on at Swanton this is what this is what people are doing this is how people care about it exactly. and that really resonates and I think you know the, we, this link this thing that we have with, with Japan uh, and Taunton Town is, is, is great and we really do thank you for, for you know obviously what's what's the uh, extending the arm extending the great vinyl whatever that saying is yeah, you know? yeah but I mean it's 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 an ex- extension of, of my being as well, my own identity. You know, I, w- I want to talk about my hometown and yeah. when I'm 
glad there's a professional justification for for doing so. But people do care. You know, I mean, Taunton Town, Taunton Town is undoubtedly the the biggest supported semi English semi professional team in Japan. Mm-hmm. I mean, that goes without saying. But I'd say. You'd struggle to find anybody in League One or below yeah. that has as many Japanese followers as, we as Taunton yeah. Town does. I mean, that's just for me abusing my position, oh, really. No, but, but, but I mean, you know, there is an interest there because it is sufficiently different and it's sufficiently separated from the Premier League yeah. and from the J League. But to, to be a really good example of how embedded football is as part of the mm. culture in this country and in this town, you know, and so any, anything that... Uh, I'm able to talk about or, or show to them is, is a pleasure for me and it's a real pleasure for me for when Japanese people take an interest yeah you know? exactly yeah. and uh, just to obviously like you're doing we're linking this to Taunton Town uh, how, how long have you been supporting Town? right so well as I say I used to play in Hamilton Park as a small kid yeah. and I don't know if this counts as supporting and maybe I shouldn't say it too loud with the, with the chairman just in the other room but I used to sort of peek through the fence okay. Because we're at the at the side that uh, backs onto Hamilton Park. So that's the Invest Southwest end now. Yeah, there didn't used to be the the, the roof and the and the wall there. So there was just a fence with okay. lots of holes in it, okay. and, you, and you could basically see. So I used to when I sat sat there yeah. playing in the park. I used to come over then. The first time I came here officially, I was fifteen. That was for the FA Cup third qualifying round wow. in ninety eight ninety nine. Uh, against Kettering Town, okay. who were at the time second in the what was called the conference then. So in the th- from the third qualifying round, the conference teams came in, and so Taunton got drawn against the second hardest team they possibly could have done. Mm-hmm. Played here, won four three, last yeah. minute winner, yeah. invaded the pitch afterwards, just brilliant. And you know your first game, your that, first yeah. game's a four three thriller. Mm-hmm. Then you know, yeah, you you do get hooked, and I think. I'm sure it's still the case now. You you grow up here and your first impressions of football is, well, playing it in the park, obviously, but watching it on TV. Yeah. So everybody has a Premier League team or, mm-hmm. or a professional team that they support. I was no different. Um, but then you, you realise that Taunton Town exists. And, yeah. and, and uh, as a teenager, I was at Richard Hewish Hugh, College, had a slightly more money in my pockets. So, okay, I can afford to come, yeah. come in off my, off my own bat. I came with a few friends and it was brilliant. And then we went up to the uh, fourth qualifying match against Cheltenham Town, who were top of the conference. So they were the yeah. hardest team we could have possibly got. Went up on, on, on the bus, we got to the stadium, um, and the match was called off because the pitch was waterlogged. Yeah. And poor Russell Musker, the manager at the time, was having to try and get players to get their time, oh, get time off work yeah, for, for a rearranged imagine. fixture in, in the middle of the week, which Taunton sadly lost. Yeah, so from, from then, I mean, then I went to university, so I wasn't here all the time, but back in the university holidays, uh, go to as many games yeah, as, yeah, as yeah. you could. Back then... You know, through the gates, two or three hundred people. Yeah. Uh, initially battling for the FA Vars and mm-hmm. for uh, promotion from what was then the Screwfix League. I think the Western right. League with Tiverton Town. I've got relatives from Tiverton. Okay. So the rivalry we, we had with Tiverton twenty years ago was was a bit of a family still issue. So it's still, still strong. strong to this it's day. still strong. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, unfortunately, it didn't go quite so well the other day. <sighs> but I mean, my, my don't t- say that now, Ben, because it still hurts. It still I know, hurts. It still hurts. But it's a big rivalry exactly. again now because it was when twenty I, years ago. Yeah, when still, I first became a real Taunton Town supporter, mm. that 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 was the rivalry. I'm so glad that it is again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll we'll, we'll finish ahead. Of oh, for sure. obviously, yeah. obviously. It's, and I must say, I must stress this. Uh, just going whilst I'm getting on camera. This uh, this um, this Peacock's podcast much better than that talking TV nonsense. Must say, just got to get that out there. Yeah, podcast down there. Apparently so. Never heard of that. Uh, and we're just going to do the last question uh, for now. It's just a bit of fun. Sure. Um, would you be able to teach me some Japanese? Sure. What would you like to know? Uh, I think we'll just start with the normal hello and goodbye. Okay, so hello is konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Okay. I heard that's sort of probably the most um, well-known in, in yeah, sort of English. Yeah. And the, the most sort of polite way of saying goodbye is sayonara. Sayonara. But it seems okay. a bit final when you say that. If right. you're just saying to your friends, you, you might just say jane. So that's just bye, is yeah. it? Okay. Yeah, like it's basically see ya. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And th- th- that's the thing is, there's, there's, like, like you have in, in English speaking, there's very informal ways and very formal ways of saying hello and goodbye. Yeah. Uh, let's let's go with yes and no. <laughs> well, that depends on context. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes is basically hi. Yeah. Uh, no is ie. Yeah. But I mean, there are certain contexts in which you can use it, and some which you can't. Right. This this actually, I suppose, was the hardest thing about learning Japanese in the. With European languages, there's basically, not always, but most of the time, a direct translation for yeah, everything. Like Japanese is not always. Okay. And so you have to get your head around 
uh, that little bit. Yeah, with the politeness, for example, there's basically six or seven different ways of saying anything, okay. depending on who you are, who the other person is, who's more, who's older, younger, who's more super superior or inferior right. depending on I mean I failed French and <laughs> so it was it was very like you know pronouns of he she and yeah. and feminine masculine and all this sort of stuff yeah. so well, I, well, I, we don't have that that's, a, that's, that's another thing I, I found out that yeah. the English obviously have he she and French and yeah. German all that but Japanese don't have any pronouns or well, they do but you don't have to use them you can okay. you can yeah you don't use the subjects of the sentence very often right if it's implies then you don't you, you don't if you you wouldn't say I am Ben for example mm. you just basically say i am ben got yeah so um, like i'm ben but just yeah yeah you, you wouldn't say the i and if i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that you wouldn't say, use the i'm i'm, I'm, I'm gonna time. do this i'm gonna yeah okay yeah. Right. yeah uh and we'll go for just just for this last thing okay. um what about taunton town score the winner is that uh is that you know obviously it links to your job so taunton town or kesho goal or kimemashita that's going to take me a couple of tries. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Ben, for coming on. Um, obviously, if you'd like to send any questions to do with Taunton Town, you can do so by going to our social media pages at Taunton Town FC or by emailing media at tauntontown.com. All the best for the future, Ben. Thank and that's the much. sixth episode of the Peacocks podcast. Yeah.